Okay, um, welcome everyone. Um, and welcome to tonight's session presented by the Wilton Library. I am um, Andrea Sato and I work on adult programming with Michael Bellicosa. We're happy to be able to bring you many programs like this one that inform, inspire, and educate the Wilton community and beyond. We're pleased to welcome Lori Klein tonight for this webinar on photography and self-discovery, capturing your personal stories with your smartphone or camera. Lori Klein has been a photographer and educator for over four decades, and she's recognized worldwide for her images of the female form in the landscape, as well as infrared photography. Her work embodies a soft, passionate style that most often depicts the human experience in nature. Lori's work has appeared in hundreds of publications and numerous gallery ex exhibitions, and she's the author of several photography books. So we're very pleased to be able to have Lori with us tonight. As you heard, um, we're recording tonight's session, and uh, in a few days after we get it ready, we can send you the link so you can view it again if you like. We're asking everyone to hold their questions until the end, and uh, depending on how many people we have, um, you can either uh, put your question in the chat, not in the Q&A, in the chat, uh, is the most helpful way, or you can raise your hand on the bottom uh, bar uh, down below and we can call on you with a question if you have questions and Lori will answer as many as she can tonight. So with that, I'm going to go off screen and hand it over to Lori. Thank you so much. It's so nice to be here. Um, hi, Allison. I know Allison from, oh my God, how many decades ago? A real long time ago. Probably 40 years. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so um, I, I come from Connecticut. Um, I was born and bred basically in Connecticut, lived in Brookfield for a really long time. Um, my mom, my 90 year old mom still lives there and my sister's family and I miss it a lot. I do live in Providence right now, kind of followed my kids out here. And uh, Providence is pretty cool. Um, so, but I do miss Connecticut and I miss all my friends. Um, it's a beautiful state. Uh, so I'm going to um, talk about me for a while and then, um, uh, you know, we'll open up a discussion. Um, I am really excited for you guys to be here with me and I can share my joy and I just I love what's happening with photography I actually just finished a smartphone co uh, course on on Mondays we had four Mondays here and it was really quite wonderful they were other artists um, a couple of photographers that were in the class too and what we can do with our um, our smartphone is just ridiculously amazing and it's so light and we can't say, well, I can't bring my big girl camera with me because it's too heavy. It's just really kind of, you know, it's always with us. And um, with technology these days, it's just really fascinating what we can create. Um, so I'm going to share my screen and I am going to um, give you my presentation. I assume you can all see it. Okay, good. All right, let me get going here. Okay. Um, so let me move these out of the way. So um, as you know, this is my class. I'm going to, I'm going to, um, kind of be redundant. Um, photography and self-discovery, capturing your personal stories with your smartphone or your camera. Are you ready to have an affair with your creativity? So I was wrong. I, you know, sometimes I get my numbers mixed up. I have been a photographer for over five decades, which really dates me. I found it at a very young age at Brookfield High School. I was very lucky that I found something that I was passionate about. Um, and I've been an educator for probably about 30 of those three decades, we'll say. Um, I was also a wedding photographer for 25 years, did a lot of weddings in, um, 
in Connecticut and in New York City, and then I traveled. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. And my camera would be the storyteller that created memories and legacies. And I think that's one of the greatest gifts that we have um, with photography is that it gives us that. I mean, we this is this is how we have memories of um, fleeting memories, and um, how we can you know keep our generations and generations before us going and with us is through our photographs. Um, I am a big quote person when I teach. Um, and so I will try not to, I didn't do that many, but I love Rumi. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, um, this poem by him. The guest house. This being human is a guest house. Every morning, a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness. Some momentary awarenesses come as unexpected visitors. Welcome and entertain them all. Even if they're crowds of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture, still treat each guest honorably. He may be clearing you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Now, one of the things that I have learned from my photography is that um, it's all about my emotions. This is how I work out my life. Um, it is a psychological uh, outlet. I will talk a lot about that um, during this presentation. Um, but it's something more than just taking photographs. I know there are days, especially now, I live alone. My kids don't live near me right now. And it's just very frustrating at times. And when I do get down in the dumps, I go take my camera or my iPhone and I just go out and shoot. It, do it totally changes my energy. It changes how I feel. And to me, it's a lifeline. And I think that's the availability um, for, for many of us. I actually wanted to be a, a, a phototherapist because when I was in grad school, I would see students work and I'm like, oh my God, do they realize what is going on in their lives? Um, I didn't know, you know, but it's, it's things happen. That's what it's kind of like, we don't purposefully do it. It just comes out and you start seeing your work and like, why is there a circle every time in your images or why, what are the patterns or why do you have no people in your pictures? And, you know, so it tells us a lot. It makes us feel good. And it is such a creative outlet. We are all creatives. Using our creative genes and creative thinking makes us happy and very empowered. So photograph is a verb. It is an action, plain and simple. My art is meant to inspire and uplift. I want people to be moved, intrigued and provoked to wonder. My imagery is informed by the majesty of nature and intimate relationships. I seek to help others gain inner perspective and my greatest wish is for all my art to work metaphorically as a mirror in one in which one sees oneself. I do feel photography is magic. Um, I do shoot in a non-visible spectrum, which is very interesting to kind of uh, pre-visualize in something that our eye doesn't see. I um, So it is infrared, which is, um, I just love it. I find it very interpretive. Um, and so we can read, I, I wanna do images and make images that don't just tell everything. I want my viewer, um, to come in and make up their own stories. So we could say many stories about this. This is an allium. And it's just like, to me, it's a gift. And just the way the hands are cupping it and how softly it is. So it is a story. And again, my camera allows me to do this. So um, when I was in undergraduate school, I graduated from um, Rochester Institute of Technology in photography. And um, I was, um, I was a biomed photographer. And so that's where I learned infrared for diagnostic and research purposes. And I didn't know anything other about, call, um, about photography other than scientific purposes. And I had a really wonderful mentor who said to me, um, you're basically flunking out of this program, but I will pass you if you do two things. One is if you go into photography as a fine art program and get a BFA. And the other was to study with Ansel Adams. Now the person on the right is Ansel and the uh, person on the left is Imogene Cunningham, which you may have heard of too. 
And so he also said to me that I want you to go study with him. So I went out to Yosemite and took a summer workshop with Ansel and it changed my life because I thought photography was just, like I said, something for diagnostic or researchers, scientific purposes. And I realized it was for so much more. And I fell in love with his work. I mean, who, how can you not? I mean, such beautiful majesty and appreciation of, uh, you know, the world and our earth. And it was really interesting too, because I learned how to slow down because, you know, especially with the, the smartphone these days, so we just click away. We don't have film. We don't have that expense. And so we don't do it dig- diligently. And so sometimes we just do it way too fast and we don't learn what we can. So this is my image, which is a homage to him. Um, I teach, I, I am very blessed before COVID and it's starting up again, is I get to teach pretty much a lot in this country and also in other countries. And um, I get to see the beautiful landscapes that are around us. But one of the reasons that I, this is my homage to him is that everything was deliberate. And a lot of times we take photographs in the, and in this day and day with, with digital, we can like get rid of things really quickly. And, and, you know, if you don't like the chimney, well, just get rid of it. We'll use the healing tool or something. And so I, I think the experience changes. And so for me, I knew, I knew from Ansel's, you know, his process and practice was so slow. It could take him days to get the right image. It could take him, you know, weeks for the clouds to be in the right place. And that's what happened here is that if you see coming out of the chimney is the cloud, and then there's a a swooping of other clouds that mimic the sway of the roof and the texture. So it was just, uh, you know, and, and I learned the zone system from him, which is how to get, you know, all the black and all the whites. So this is my homage. And, you know, it's not something that we learn overnight, but when we do it, it just feels rich and exciting. And um, whenever I look at this picture, I always think of him. Um, This is film. I did shoot film until I, I actually wrote an article for a magazine saying film isn't dead. Why did we have to do stop using it? Because they stopped making infrared film. They stopped making all this other film and we went to digital, which I will say now I almost exclusively exclusively am a digital photographer, but um, somebody asked me if I could give them my Hasselblad and I'm not ready to give that up yet. So um, so the grandeur of our earth and, and landscapes, you know, and that's what's nice about having a smartphone though, is that we can take these moments because the camera is always with us. And, and technology has gone really far. So you can make images look really great. And sometimes you can't even tell if it was from a camera or if it was from um, a, uh, a smartphone. So uh, I was a single mom um, in Connecticut. Uh, my kids were three and five. I did not believe in, I didn't want to do daycare. I wanted to raise them. My parents helped me and my grandmother did. And I decided, I, it was like, what could I do? I had had a gallery in a school and I was teaching at um, U, uh, West Con. And um, I realized that I wouldn't be able to make enough money. And then I wouldn't be able to be with the kids during the week. So I started doing weddings. And I think part of it is the psychology of like, my, my marriage didn't last. And maybe I could get the marriage right by every time, every weekend going to a wedding and seeing people in love, you know, so that that really, you know, again, if you have a passion to it, you can, it, you can make it work. Um, so that's what I did 25 years of weddings, I was so you guys are all from that area. So you'll know what I you know, I'm, I did a lot of weddings at really, really high end. Um, you know, venues a lot over like in Tappan Hill up on the river. And in New York City, I was in magazines, I was on you do you remember and Sylvia Weinstock, who was the great cake person, she and I used to do weddings together. And what was her name with the big glasses and she had the TV show. Um, Oh, boy. Uh, Anyway, she was a big name TV show. I did her daughter's wedding. So I I really, I would, they were really nice weddings that I got to see. And every weekend I fell in love again with the bride and the groom. So it was really wonderful. And, um, but I made pretty and that's what I did. But my last and, and pretty is nice, pretty is okay. And then as we go on through, through my talk, you'll see that I'm, I'm, there are other emotions that I have besides making pretty. So the last wedding I did 
was um, in uh, 2014. And this is my son, my youngest son and my daughter-in-law. And what they did is they said, um, uh, Bryce said to me, Ma, we have to go scout to see where we need to have the wedding because we want really good infrared images. And so I said, well, let's go find a willow tree. And this is in the uh, West Hartford area. And so it's really romantic. So I was being very true to my art and to my craft because I'm a landscape photographer. I learned from Ansel, I learned from other people. And so that's what I did with weddings is I'd find these great scenes and then I just knew where to put the people. Um, so my surrogates, um, they become my surrogates. They become my storytelling. Uh, this one, the, the sun had just broken. And this is my son and daughter-in-law. And I got down really low because I wanted separation from his hat, from his head to, to the sky. And then I just say, I said to my daughter-in-law, I said, just totally relax and just trust in my son. And he's looking into the future. So it's all about storytelling and that we don't do that. I mean, I see so many images all the time. And I said, why did you take that image? I don't know. Then why did you take that image? I don't know. So I think the deliberation, especially if you think of it as a craft or an art is really, really important. Have you ever been in love? Horrible, isn't it? It makes you so vulnerable. It opens your chest and it opens up your heart. And it means that someone can get inside you and mess you up. Now, I felt that. I don't know if you know Neil Gaiman. He's a really, really great author. Um, I would cry oftentimes when somebody looked at my images because they could see right through me. Because, And I didn't even realize it. My images were about my insides. They were about things that I was feeling. And it was such a vulnerability. So I had uh, recently, I think in the fall, I was interviewed by Adobe. Um, you can take a screenshot of this or um, we can put it maybe in the uh, chat room, but it was, it was on um, how creativity is self-care, how photography can boost your wellness practices. And it's really, um, it really is, it does. You just feel good. There are days that I am just in such a rut and I said, you know what, I gotta get out of it. I can't go swimming right now, so I'm going out and taking a picture, and it makes a huge, huge difference. Um, my, so my oldest son is a photographer for the city of Cambridge and Boston, and my other son is, the younger son is um, a doctor. And so the doctor son, Bryce, and I do a lot of workshops. We did it for uh, UConn Med, Brown uh, medical students, um, and there's a lot of statistics on how creating can help us. And so we had some, so Bryce was in uh, his residency. He's at his, he's doing a fellowship now in, um, uh, at UPenn. So, you know, he, he's, he's really in the thick of things, especially during COVID. And we would see the students come in, his friends come in and they were just a wreck. They were exhausted. They were falling asleep when I was talking. And then we got them out to shoot and their energy changed. It was like a shift. It was like therapy. It was like just, you know, balancing yourself. So I don't know if any of you have ever tried that, but um, it is, it's, it is the joy of self-expression. Um, what happened when I was um, in graduate school, I went to graduate school uh, at, in Ohio and I had a really great teacher that um, was a minor white disciple. And he helped me a lot with, um, with how to read photographs and I am an empath so I can and I see patterns I really see patterns if you gave me 10 images even off your iPhone I could tell you more about you than you would even you'd say how do you know that but it's just because certain things keep happening and happening and I wanted to get a degree in uh, art therapy because I wanted to understand what was going on and then I realized getting two degrees two graduate degrees at the same time is just yeah that's too much so I didn't do it so um, I work out, like I said, my inner landscape. Um, I had really bad body image. Um, you know, I was growing up in a time, you know, in the 70s where, you know, it was never enough. And I was uh, pretty heavy. I was heavy set. And it was always do something with her, Lori, with her hair, you know, tame her hair. I'm like, my hair is untamable. You know, lose some weight, do stuff like that. So what I did is I started using surrogates. And this is another thing that's really nice when you photograph is use one model. Um, 
this is Nicole. She is, um, she was one of, I, I mentored a lot of high school kids when I was in Connecticut because I felt I was given that gift. I had to pay it forward. And so she is probably 17. She's now 31 or two. And so she became my surrogate. So, um, you know, or my muse, however you want to look at it. So I was able to work out a lot of feelings. I did storytelling. I did role playing. We, and I gave prompts. Like, have you ever felt like this? I would never tell them exactly what to do. Um, I had, I was, I remember one time I had just, my dad had gone off the wall. This was later on and I, I was a wreck. And so I used one of my models for one of the one of the places that I taught at, and she helped me role play through it. And I got these really amazing images and it also let me release. So here for me, a lot of it was rebirthing. How do I rebirth myself with better image of myself? But, you know, more kindness. So I would use nature, which is protective. And it's like, she's in the roots. Like everything I do when I photograph is deliberate. So, you know, I wanted the dark around her. So it, it was very, very planned. Um, I love roots and women because I think we are all part of nature. And do we grow the roots or do the ro roots grow us? So photography and self-discovery. Do you ever think that your photographs are telling you something? I would love to know this, you know, maybe put something in the chat because they are speaking to us, especially when we start seeing our images over and over again. And we start saying, why is there always a hand in the right hand side of the picture? It, it can be anything, but there is a pattern to what we do. Um, so I do this all the time. It's how I work out my internal landscape. I listen, you need to be quiet and you let your imagery gu guide you. So I was in um, Virgin Gorda and uh, my friend was, I, I went with my friend and she brought a friend and I'm like, wow, look at these rocks. I hadn't planned on shooting. Actually, you're not supposed to photograph in Virgin Gorda, but I'm like, oh my God, look at the, look at the rock on the left. It's like a perch. So I asked my model, could she like perch over there? And then this is me. I don't know if you can, and the other rock on the right, can you see the slice? There's a person in there. So hopefully you can see the person. So I stuck a person that I didn't even know in there because it was the egg that was gonna break. Now I didn't understand what that meant till later on. And also she has a big tattoo on her butt and it also was up in the, um, on the rock. So I like patterns. I like storytelling. Um, I'm not gonna tell you which pictures are infrared or black and white or from my iPhone. I'll, I'll tell you some more um, later on because I do have a, a, a a grouping of the um, the iPhone because it's really fun for post-production. But it's all about storytelling and releasing and having fun. And maybe I could never do this because of my body you know, image lack of, but she could and she could be my surrogate. And what joy, what joy she had to just be totally, you know, naked and vulnerable. And I love vulnerability. I think vulnerability is a really important thing. And again, this is like she's in the clouds and they're, they're kind of mirrors each other. They look like the same person. This is not a composite. Um, so there's such joy um, in photographing and you can make up your own story. You can reinvent your history, which I think is really amazing. I mean, our history is history, but how long do we carry around all that negative crap? So it can be grand, it can be wonderful, it can be breathtaking. Um, this is, I teach at Maine Media every year. Um, and this was just a really wonderful model. And, you know, I just had her in the lily pads and like she's asleep and just very comfortable. Um, and then there are days that I feel boxed up. And so when I feel that, I have a model that goes there. I don't need to see the head. I don't need to see much of the body, but she's very confined. But it's, again, joy. You know, water, um, I lived on Candlewood Lake my whole life. Um, and water was what I was known for. I used to photograph the brides. They would come back after the wedding, wedding and we would do, they would go on the lake with their gowns. It was spectacular. The parents were not always that happy because, yeah. So 
I travel to teach and I lead workshops, like I said, all over the place. And I love it. It's been very hard, but it hasn't because we've had Zoom. And I've, I actually did a nine month class, almost like a graduate class last year. And I now have students from, um, I did a class today and one of the students is from um, Australia, another one from Mexico, another one from Turkey. So it makes it a small world. Um, I'm gonna be doing more traveling where it's hybrid, where we prepare and then we do post-production and tell the stories because it's a combination of what we capture and also what we do with post-production. So this is France. Um, I don't know how many of you know Lens Babies, um, but there's a lot of, um, I, I have a, a link later on that I'll show you called Momentum and really, really wonderful lenses for your um, iPhone or your smartphone. And it gives you that blurred look. It, this is kind of a lens baby thing. You get see a little bit of the twirl, but you know, to me, France is old. It has such a history. And I didn't want, I wanted that pathway to be sharp. And so I just use the, you know, the bokeh around it to make it kind of um, timeless. Uh, this was in, um, oh, British Columbia. And um, yeah, I made my, I asked my model if she'd, climb up to the window. And again, I wanted everything a blur because, and this is what I'm finding now is that life is a blur right now. We don't really know what's sharp in focus and what isn't. And so there are a lot of lenses that you can use. I mean, we used to put Vaseline on our filters to get, yeah, to get that look, which was really um, wonderful. But there's so, it's so accessible right now. This was me going through one of those things like, you know, it was always like, my dad wanted me to have straight hair. So she had straight hair and I pinned it up because it was, you know, it, it was my personal story, but, and some of the images are, you know, I don't show them, but I did them for my own self awareness and self growth. Um, I also felt that there were times, you know, growing up as a, as a girl is that we were supposed to be seen and not heard, but she's kind of covered with her hands and then with her mouth. Um, I'm Like I said, I'm very deliberate. Everything is there for a reason or to tell a story. And again, this is a lens baby. Um, and actually this was on an iPhone because you can stick some of the, they have really great lenses that will stick right on your camera, on your, um, your iPhone. Um, so I play, I play a lot. I do do bodies of work. Um, this was last, this was last summer where it was one of the first times I was able to go on a location. And like, I feel like there's a crack in the world. So I'm storytelling. So I found a crack, crack in this concrete ball. And um, this is a model I've worked with for a while. And I just said, relax one hand and take the other hand and pull it. Like you're opening up your own egg. Is, and like, she, doesn't she look like she's listening? Is there an egg? Is there another person inside? So again, it's storytelling. These are obviously iPhone classes, uh, images. And I just like the fact where you've got all this busyness of the street and then you've got these cloths that come down. So they're storytelling. And I'm not, I'm not a literal storyteller. Um, I'm a gut, I go for feelings. Um, I have prompts. Um, especially when I do iPhone class in the class that I just did is it's a matchbook. It's really cool. And you pull out a prompt and you go out and you photograph from that prompt because sometimes when we just go out and photograph and have no idea what we're going to photograph, you know, what good is that going to do? Um, these are my legs. I didn't ever like my legs. So I made them really look distorted. And um, these are all in uh, one of my favorite apps is Snapseed on smartphones. It does almost everything. It's crazy. This is called the grunge app in it. Um, I also very often will take uh, photographs that I took on my big girl camera and put it through Snapseed. Um, so sometimes it's just simple things like this is, um, I was teaching in Santa Fe and this is, they have a great farmer's market there and the carrots look just so cool. And I loved it on how, I loved how it was presented. Um, yeah, I, I hate selfies. I actually hate having my photograph taken, but there are times that I just, you know, it's just me and I just get so annoyed and I just don't know where I am and I want to hide. So I will do um, selfie pictures. I do have with my iPhone, um, I have a whole setup on a tripod 
and a timer so I can actually take photographs of myself. So I'm not, I'm not, you know, telling you go do infrared and go get a big girl or big boy camera. Um, there's just so much available these days. And then, you know, you get all these apps like Snapseed that gives you the border that almost looks like it's a Polaroid. Um, and, and I, as, as you see, I love a lot of things that are sharp and that are not sharp. And then just the simplicity. That's the other thing we do. I think we try to put too much in an image. And it's really interesting. Um, I hope you guys will follow me. I follow some of you on um, Instagram. Mine is just Lori Klein photo. And I just can't believe sometimes the images I say I see and all the likes. And if you look at the images, they're nothing. But they're either shock value or they've got certain other things that probably shouldn't be on Instagram. But I just think simplicity, and maybe it's me right now, is I like the tranquility. I, I am feeling alone. So when you feel alone, that's what, you know, when you can tap into it, that's how, you know, we tell our stories. Um, I did get to visit my kids at uh, the holidays, and they just got two cats. I should have asked you what you think this is, but this is a cat from the back and its tail is just whipped around. So I love abstracts. Um, this is totally off on my iPhone using Snapseed. Um, so this is hysterical. Um, so the picture on the left, my favorite part of Snapseed is the composites. When you can actually um, put more than one image on top of another image. So on the left are two pictures. It's a picture of, um, those the top which is a tree and then another picture of the tree in the sky and then on the right it's um birds because all these apps like this is fx um app and you can put birds wherever you want i think it's hokey but i have to say i i, I showed this recently i had it on instagram and one of my best friends said this is the best photograph i've ever seen you take and i want a big one of it for my house and I'm like, okay, I, I didn't see it, uh, but you know, it's really fun. It's very different than what I do, but I also realized it's very representative of this time. You know, we can't really be outside, things are moving. So again, how do you story tell with your images? So once I got over the fact that it's in color and if you've noticed, you have not seen, I don't shoot color. Um, I always said I'm not a good color photographer, which I was selling myself short because I am a good color photographer. I just, I like the interpretation of black and white because I think you can tell more um, stories and different stories that way. And with black and white, um, you, you have, you can, you can fill in the, uh, the blanks a little bit. I mean, I think this is kind of cool, but you know, it's very, it's just out of my, what I usually do. So lockdown, um, I had no travel all of my classes got um, canceled. Um, it was it, it was really sad because I, I have a huge repeat. Like most of my workshops, wherever I go, are at least half full with students that have already taken classes with me. So we already know each other, which is really nice. And it was isolation. And it's like, okay, what are you going to do? So I, you know, I'm not going to be able to use models. I'm not going to be out photographing. So I did have my hair done down in the courtyard and um, I had to come up to my loft to get something. So that's, this is a um, composite using Snapseed, using two pictures. And one is of me, you can see the mask and you can see the eyes. And then the other is my China doll that I did for my thesis. Uh, graduate school. And you can see the lip is over to the side a little bit and you can see how the eyes like are kind of open. Um, it's really spooky, um, but I think it's one of the best photographs I've taken during COVID. And, you know, I don't have my models. I've also, my work has, it, oh my God, it has changed incrementally since COVID because I'm not feeling those same feelings. I'm not feeling, you know, the strength of, you know, the, of women, how beautiful they are and the strength of them and, and nature. But, you know, I, I will always go back to it. Um, I hate self-portraits, but I did not have a surrogate. So I went, this is my shower. And I have this ball that reminds me of what they show what COVID looks like. So that's what it represents. And um, I bent over, I have a tiara in my hair. I mean, I just did it up. 
I have no clothes on, which is just so unlike me. And this is my ode to COVID. But because again, if you, if we don't tell the stories, we just shove things down. Like I used to do that with eating. It's like I'd eat, eat, eat till I got numb. I was feeling numb during COVID. And that's why I took out the camera. And wait till you see the new stuff. I can't even recognize it being me. So there's more to creating than making pretty. It doesn't matter the camera you use. It's all about feelings, stories, and being curious. And I love that being curious because I think the more we're curious, the more we ask of our image making. And it's the more we can grow because, you know, I know it's successful. I could, I repeat myself all the time. I'm like, I don't want to, I want to be curious. Like something changed in our lives. So how do we be curious about it? How do we be curious about the barriers we have? How do we heal this way? So between two worlds, um, this is an image that actually got a, a, a big award at the Fairfield um, Art Museum or Museum of Art. Um, this was, I'm going back in time a little bit, but I really feel this is very relevant to now. Um, it was a color image. This was done on the um, on my iPhone in Snapseed. And so it was this model who I hadn't really met. Somebody had said, you really, the two of you would really uh, like each other. Um, and we were in a parking lot. And so I had Mylar, I had colored my uh, colored gel rather over us because I didn't want to get wet. And I love the color coming on her. And you can see like the little dots in the background, which is the rain. But you know, there's these triangular shapes, three of them, her down in the bottom and over on the side. And they're all, and her eyes are closed. If her eyes were looking at me, it would be a whole different picture. So again, when you're doing storytelling and I, you know, I mean, it is therapy because she's me, she's my surrogate. I didn't, I knew a transition was happening and closing my eyes and going inward was what that was all about. Um, also this one, I, I, I took a class with Keith Carter um, after I had taught, he teaches at the same place I did. I taught one week and then stayed on. And it was me realizing I need to photograph people my age. I need to photograph non-pretty. I need to photograph energy. And so it really, it was, it, so I've lately been changing things very quickly. Um, so Snapseed. I was in a plane a lot, like I said, traveling to teach. And that's where I would do my composites. And I think, I hope all of you know what composites are, but they're using more than one image or element and um, you're, you're stacking images on top of each other. So this is Nicole, who was the one that you saw earlier, my surrogate, my, my, um, my muse, my creativity daughter. And so I didn't know what to do with it. She got a lollipop in her mouth and we're, traveling over the Great Lakes. And I'm like, whoa, this is a really cool image. So I took a picture of the Great Lakes and I said, what if I put her laying down on it because we've lost scale? So again, how do you tell stories? And, and seriously, when you start doing this kind of stuff, you so feel lighter because you're working out things that you don't even realize. And, and sometimes it's just because it's pretty. It's like that last one that my friend really likes. It, it really is pretty and it makes me, it gives me breathing space. So that's how this was made and it has a few clouds in there. And I love the fact that it's up abstract. Um, this is Snapseed too. Um, I'm gonna talk about hand coloring in a little while. Um, it was a shell, and I think you can see the eyes and the mouth. Yep. So um, that, it's really easy. It's overlays. So you can just put one overlay on top of another overlay. So composites and Snapseed, I really, uh, Snapseed these days is free. It's a leaf, a green leaf. Um, you can download it from the App Store. And it, it pretty much does everything if you wanted to add, um, frames, if you wanted to vignette, if you wanted to make it black and white or color, it, it you really, if, if you're using your smartphone a lot, you really don't need much more than uh, Snapseed. I had to buy it for $5 back when it was part of uh, McFun, but now it's free. Um, so sometimes I do take photographs um, from my big girl camera um, sometimes I don't, this one is, and I just did an overlay of textures and it becomes a composite and it's very much, it's much easier for me than doing um, it in Photoshop or Lightroom, which one day I probably will get to. But again, it tells the different stories. 
Like, why is she bigger than the mountain? Why is the mountain just going through her body? You know, why is the hair over her head? You know, so it starts storytelling. And that's what I think that composites do is that we can make reality into unreality. Oops, sorry, I had that twice. Um, I do go crazy. This is my loft, <laughs> what you can see about it. And so I have been doing a lot of camera movement. I don't know how much of you have heard of ICM, which is an intentional camera movement. And there is an app on your phone, your iPhone, which I think it's a blue app. Um, and it's, uh, let me see if I can find it. It's called, I'm not going to be able to find it. Wait, wait a minute. Uh, da, 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 da. Slow shutter. So you can actually do this movement with a slow shutter. It takes a little while to get used to it. But again, what's in focus? I don't know what's in focus these days. One day, like Providence has been really bad with COVID. And all of a sudden, we don't have to wear masks. So I don't understand. And so to me, it's like zoom in, zoom out, zoom in. I don't know where to focus. So to me, this is a literal image of what I feel and what I'm going through. So I did do a project that was a combination of uh, iPhone and um, my big girl camera. And I call it, we were just water. And they're photos within fo photos, which has morphed into a lot more. Um, this one was in uh, France and <laughs> we were at a villa, a real, I mean, from like the 1600s and we were allowed to take the photograph off the wall, which is of the area. And I had one of my students hold over it because I love photographs within photographs because I just think it tells, you know, it, 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 it sandwiches the generations and it just tells really amazing historical um, stories. So I will photograph, I will put a photograph on my iPhone and then I usually have somebody else hold it up because I can't, I, I only have two hands. And so what I loved is the shape of that building. And this is, um, this is down in Narragansett. And it's the same shape as the archway, which you saw the front end of this picture earlier where the woman looks like she's dancing and she's in the stone uh, window of the church. And so what is the relationship between her and that building in the back? And it looks like, except for the iPhone, it looks like something that it could have been done generations ago, you know, years ago. Um, I did desaturate it some. Um, so I, I, I really love this. I just haven't worked on it in a while. And, you know, it's like, why are cows in the ocean? You know, so we can tell stories, we can give hints, we can give, you know, um, prompts. So this is hysterical. And I, I wanted to show it to you in both because I do like the black and white better, but the color works too. And this was photographed by, um, with an iPhone. So I'm, I, I asked my friend that was with me, I said, could you just hold this up because I wanna get a picture of the emu with the ocean behind it. And this woman comes jogging on the beach from nowhere. You can't make this, wait, you can't make this up. And she just turns and smiles because she thinks we're taking her picture. <laughs> and then she continued running. But it's like, it's like, this is just hysterical. And I gotta tell you, if I didn't have my iPhone with me, I would not have gotten this picture. Because again, there's intimidation when uh, people don't like having their picture taken, but iPhone, everybody's used to it. So, I mean, I've had a lot of people say, you're not taking my picture with that camera. But if it's the iPhone, you can, you can just hold it up and pretend and nobody knows. And so also it's good, I, I, you know, I like to in Snapseed do something in color, which is somewhat desaturated on the left, and then on the right is black and white. And I kind of, and then I get to live with it. I made, oh, I have the best printer. It's called a selfie printer. And I usually use um, Costco because it's like 17 cents for a four by six. This is a little more expensive, but what happens is that if I have a picture um, I put it, you know, it's on the phone anyway, and it's wireless and it'll go onto my selfie. And this way I can, I, I don't like looking at images on my reel or on my rolls or on my computer. There's something about the tangibility. It's even like this, putting the two together, you start seeing things, you start seeing the relationships. So this is my friend. And so again, I picked an image for her to hide behind. And so her eyes are open in one and close in the other. So again, I'm very deliberate in my storytelling. 
Um, and then this was one I did during COVID um, of the China doll and with the mask on and my hand and just moving across the across the uh, viewfinder. So graduate school and China dolls, this is kind of a little bit out of order, but Ruth and Olga came out of the box. Um, I grew up with them. Um, they were always in my bedroom and um, I wanted to, that's what my thesis ended up. And my, my dad, I remember at my thesis, he said, what happened? He said, Nancy, my mom, what happened to those pretty pictures that she took when she studied with Ansel Adams? So I kind of went dark. Um, and then I didn't use the China dolls until COVID because I didn't have any surrogates. I didn't have any models. So they became my models. So time travel and COVID. This is my newest work. Um, uh, when I, I was teaching at Wild Rice, which is a, um, a really wonderful place in um, on Lake Superior. And um, they, they do yoga. It's a yoga place. It's really incredible. And so this is Nicole that I was talking about before. And I'm like, things are spinning really fast. And we knew we'd be coming home and probably being on lockdown again. And so I kept seeing these balls of hay. And when things repeat themselves, I say, ah, oh, I should pay attention. And so that's what this is. This is, um, and, and honestly, I don't tell many people this, this picture has done very well for me. Um, I've sold some of them and I sold a few and also it was in a, a show and won an award, but it really is on a, um, if you turn it to the left, that's how it, it was made because how come, how could her hair be going straight out? So I just switched it over a little bit. I made it her uh, vertical instead of horizontal, but this is a pivotal image for me. And then I started seeing other ones with my friends. And it's like, to me, this is the hands of clock where let's turn it to, are we turning it forward so we can get past COVID? And I wanted this blur. So I'm working with, it's something called intentional camera movement, which is very fun, very easy to do on the smartphone because things are going so fast. So some things are in focus and some things aren't. So you can see how deliberate I am. You don't wanna go with me to what I'm photographing because it takes me a really, really long time Time to get everything perfect. And um, I was up in Acadia in Bar Harbor this past fall. And one of my models from Maine was there. Um, she, oh, you know, I hired her to come. And it was again about her being stationary, but the hair going one way and this bush going the other. And it's like, what do we focus on? What do we focus on these days? It's so again, this is this has been my way of being able to work something out. Um, this was one of my students who asked me to photograph her and um, I love this because it was it's it's almost spiritual. It feels like there was like a um, a spacecraft that had landed there and made this this kind of hole and then there was this circle, two circles that came out of nowhere and it's almost like is this halo? So it talks. You know, we all can have different interpretations, but it says a lot. Um, so this is my really newest work. Um, this is from Acadia at, up at Cadillac Mountain. And so it's the parking lot that has, I mean, we don't have to go. Like when I was in Morocco, when I was teaching in Morocco, all my students like, we had to come here to get these pictures. I said, no, you didn't. I mean, yes, you'll get, you'll get interesting images, but right in our own hometown it is. So this is a parking lot with, I didn't, with puddles. And I didn't know what to do with it until I started playing with it in Snapseed the other day. And you can see the women in the first one of the puddles. They're two different women. They both actually were uh, models for wild rice. And um, so it's a story. A story. It's, I, I kind of feel their cameos. It's not finished. I don't usually show unfinished work, but it has a story. It has a meaning and it let me release something. And also sometimes we don't know what our images have to say till we have some time. So when I was in um, Bar Harbor in Acadia, I was with, it was the first time I've been with um, uh, one of my best friends and um, my son was there and other photographers that I really love. And they were all, I mean, I can't shoot infrared in the morning. We'd go out before um, sunrise. And so I started doing these intentional camera movement, also using neutral density filters. So these are very, very, very long exposures and moving the camera. And that's what that the, um, the app that will do something very similar to that. So um, this, is, this is a photograph, um, one of my favorite photographs from the Ansel Adams days. And my kids have the photograph in their house and I just photographed it and moved it around because again, I don't know what to look, look at. What is stable? 
what's stable right now? I wanted two of her because it's not stable. What's real? What isn't? Um, you know, so again, everybody has different stories that they want to tell. I, I, I still like to make pretty, but this is a very, very long exposure. And, um, you know, you don't know what it's going to look like, but it's dreamlike. It's all, it's also very om ominous. Um, so, you know, this is, this is a language that I have. This is therapy that I have. This just makes me feel good. It makes me curious. It makes me um, want to understand things. It's, and I also, you know, everybody, everybody's a photographer right now. So I do want to stand out in different ways. Um, so I'm exploring. I don't show much work right now because I'm just exploring and I don't want, I don't want to be, um, swayed by anybody or anything. So I just am more, I'm moving in the general direction. I love the fact that some of my images in my images, they're sharp and then they're blurry all in the same image because Again, that's my inner landscape. These to me were leaves in the parking lot here during a, uh, a rainstorm and they feel like they're moving. And I want movement right now because a lot of things are very static. Um, you know, I'm shooting a lot of dead things too because, but there's a beauty in it. There's a beauty in this. This is, a, this is an infrared image that was, um, uh, that I did on a little point and shoot camera. Um, and then this was recent where, again, it looks like their eyes, this is, this is the building right below me. And it looks like it is eyes and it's swooping around. And again, there's an on, ominous feeling that's happening. Um, I'm almost done. Uh, so this picture is, um, this was up in Bar Harbor too. And do you know what that white line is? It's the moon. So what I did is I took a photograph and then I moved the camera down, but I had the moon come in. And so, no, I did it up actually, no, yeah, down right. And so the moon would come all the way down. So that strip is the moon coming down. And I, I think it's really fascinating. Is it a good picture? I don't know, but I loved making it because it was like, to me, it's moonbeams and moonbeams is something that's very positive. So many days, this is how I feel. I do. I don't know what's in focus. I don't know what to do. I feel overwhelmed. I don't know. I don't know the language of my art right now, but I do because this is it because things I want to get things back in focus, but do I, but do I have to get them out of focus in order to bring something else, something new in? Um, sorry, I had that one twice. The equipment you use doesn't matter. The beat of your heart is what matters. As an educator, I see patterns with my students' images. Their images are always speaking. It's very fascinating if you talk to people or show people your work, how sometimes they can see things that are just so obvious. I have two people that I show my work with. One is a um, writer, actually, who lives in Wilton. And another is a, uh, she's um, the evangelist for Lightroom and she lives on the West Coast. And um, because I'm very careful, because a lot of times people say, I like or I dislike, I like this. It doesn't tell me anything. And it's, it's, I want somebody who is subjective, objective, more objective than subjective, but also will point out things or point out patterns for me. So hand coloring uh, is back. Um, my first book that I ever did was um, a hand coloring book in 1999. And it was in five different countries. I, and I was on TV um, showing this. And then, it, you know, now it's become, pro, um, it's become popular again. And, um, We've been kind of integrating some iPhone pictures in with this, taking them afterwards or taking iPhone images and then hand coloring. So I thought um, I thought it might be fun to show you um, like in 30 seconds what hand coloring is. It's it is so um, meditative. Um, it's just you just you start coloring. It's like a big coloring book of your own images. So you get to stay with your images for a really long time and see what's happening. This is the book. And so this is, this is how you hand color. Um, I am actually teaching a class in Santa Fe on Zoom. We, uh, my, I've done three Zoom classes on hand coloring, but it's just fun because it's a coloring book, but it's of our images. And um, I, I don't know, you guys, a Prismacolor Barrel used to be in Danbury and um, when I taught at the college, they used to sponsor me and uh, I have like so many colors. So it's really fun. It's very, like I said, it's very therapeutic. And again, I think in this day and age, this is what we need.
more of. Whoops, sorry. Okay, so um, I do do Zooms and I do in-person workshops. Um, visit my, this is a plug for me, um, visit my um, website, which is lauriekline.com. We also have a lot of freebies, especially if you're starting out with infrared, um, just to get started. I also have um, a thing on, I think it's 25 uh, assignments where you can go out and challenge yourself and, and um, do the assignments. Um, I also on Facebook, um, I have Visual Visionaries with Lori Klein, and it's quite fun because um, a lot of my students are on it and they show work and they have feedback and they have discussions. And I think that's important, especially in now because we're not doing that many face-to-face um, -face workshops. So it's good to be inspired and to have other people, a clan, a tribe, and that's what this is. So shop moment was what I was telling you about. I would look them up. I know they're totally back ordered but they have all this equipment for um, smartphones, including duffel bags, lighting. I mean, there's a lot of people, if you've noticed, a lot of so-called professional photographers that are using um, smartphones and they're doing a really great job. So this is, and I just love going to their site and um, seeing what they have because it's just, it blows my mind. So um, upcoming workshops and events. Um, so photography for me is how I heal and celebrate life. Um, and I talk about a lot of these in my workshops. Um, sometimes I get my panties in a wad, wad and sometimes I go down the rabbit hole, yet I can work through all these things in my art. It's the way I communicate, release in ways that I couldn't do any other ways. It's my internal journey, my passion, my dance, my transcendence in my life. It's magical. And it's the longest love relationship besides my family that I've had. And yes, there are definitely ups and downs. Um, so um, I'm going to read a poem and then um, I'm going to tell you about a couple things that are coming up. And I love this poem. Um, I use it a lot in, um, when, I, when I do presentations. She let go. She let go. Without a thought or a word, she let go. She let go of the fear. She let go of the judgments. She let go of the confluences of opinions swarming around in her head. She let go of the committee of indecisions within her. She let go of the right reasons, wholly and completely without hesitations or worry. She just let go. She didn't ask anyone for advice. She didn't read a book on how to let go. She didn't search the scriptures. She just let go. She let go of all the memories that held her back. She let go of all the anxiety that kept her from moving forward. She let go of the planning and all the calculations about how to do it just right. She didn't promise to let go. She didn't journal about it. She didn't write the projected date in her day timer. She made no public announcement and put no ad in the paper. She didn't check the weather report or read her daily horoscope. She just let go. She didn't analyze whether she should let go. She didn't call her friends to discuss the matter. She didn't do a five-step spiritual mind treatment. She didn't call the prayer line. She didn't utter one word. She just let go. No one was around when it happened. There was no applause or no congratulations. No one thanked her or praised her. No one noticed a thing. Like a leaf falling from a tree, she just let go. There was no effort. There was no struggle. It wasn't good. It wasn't bad. It was what it was. And it is just that. In the space of letting go, she let it all be. A small smile came over her face. A light breeze blew through her. And the sun and the moon shone forevermore. Sapphire Rose. Actually, she's a reverend. So y'all stayed with me. Um, I, I do love that, uh, that poem. Um, I do use it a lot. Um, I do wanna tell you, um, I do a lot of workshops. They are on my uh, website. I gather I did not put any, um, I forgot to put them in my uh, PowerPoint. Um, I do have one called Transcendence. I do do a lot of, um, 
we talk a lot about what we're trying to do, why we're photographing, what are our stories. Um, and so the one that I'm doing in there, they are actually giving $75 off this month till the end of this month. And it is in, um, it's called Wild Rice Retreat Center. And um, it's a yoga place and they have like these earths and it's really a cool place. And then I teach in Santa Fe. Um, you know, I, I'm very lucky. I have, I, you know, I kind of mentioned it before, but I do have a lot of um, repeat people because we become like, we could become like a group. We become a clan. They, everyone helps one another. And it's just, I think we need it more and more. And um, I don't allow judgment in my classes. And, you know, if you don't have something positive to say, or, you know, you just, we help each other through, there's no competition. And I really, really like that. So anyway, um, would you guys, we can open it up. And if you have, do you have any questions? Laurie, there was one uh, question in the chat. Um, where do you suggest getting photos quality printed in the Connecticut area? Well, um, I use Still Still River. Well, um, they did my film, all my weddings. Um, they are in Danbury, Connecticut. Uh, but I will tell you, uh, there are a lot of labs right now that you could send it to. A lot, you know, a lot of labs are not in. They're not. They're, they're more uh, mail order kind of thing. Um, so. Still River is fantastic. I totally recommend them. Um, Mark and Kathy have run it. They, you know, I've known them for probably 30 years. Um, I also use MPix. Sometimes they have sales. They're a part of Miller's and you do it online. I, like I said, I do my work prints um, through Costco and sometimes my selfie pictures through Costco. Um, but that's, I mean, if you really want fine art, I would definitely use um, Still River. They have really, really nice paper. And I'm pretty sure they still, they still have a dark room. So you can send negatives. There's so. one more question in the chat. Um, can you talk about where to get lens babies? Sure. Um, go to their website. Uh, I am an ambassador, um, so you can use my code, which I don't remember what it is. I may be L Klein or just Klein, um, but there are a lot of really wonderful um, videos out there. So you can see, you've got to be careful because there's so many different, um, different ones right now. I mean, you could go crazy. There are like, every time I turn around, there's a new lens baby coming out. I actually have a Sony point and shoot that's a full spectrum camera. So I can shoot color and black and white and uh, all the cutoff filters for the infrared. And it's a lens turret. So it has three of their lenses on it. So you can turn it. And sometimes I turn it so it's in between two and I get like almost a double image, which is kind of cool. Um, I really like the velvet. The velvet is a prime lens, so it's glass. It's a good, you know, you can make it, you can use it where it's not even the, the, the vignetting around the side, but it's for macro, and it's a macro lens and it does soften the outside of the edge. Um, but it's a heavy, it's heavy. Um, and then there's ones that move around, the, you know, the composer. Um, I would just do your research and they have, um, they have a lot of forums that you can look into. But it's a lot of fun, especially, you know, like you, you've heard me talk about the distortion because I feel so distorted these days. Um, lens babies are a really great way to, you know, I feel you use the equipment that is going to tell your story or tell about your feelings. Um, yeah, there are a lot. I probably, don't, there's the twist, which is lovely. Um, the thing that um, you, if you're on a full frame camera, um, that's fine. You just have to watch if you're on a crop sensor um, because you may lose some of the vignetting or the haloing on the outside. I pretty sure like I just I just got my first mirror. Well, it's my second mirrorless that I think I'm going to keep. And um, I've been able to use all of my lenses right on that camera. So it's, uh, you know, all the uh, lens babies, but play with them. You I think you can rent them, too. I don't know where rentals, I mean, I used to go into the city to get the rentals, but um, it's nice to try to play with them. And you can get ones that are refurbed. 
and play with them. So what, what, if you could go and do some research, see what effects you like, because you know, with the, with the one that you move, um, I think, it, and there's an edge one that's just a little thin thing. So you have to move it and you've got to be, you know, where do, what do you want and focus? What don't you want? And you know, what is that going to look like? Because it totally changes the story. Laurie, there are a couple of questions in the chat. Um, the next one is, what sort of paper do you like to use for your hand-colored photographs? So it has to be a matte uh, paper. If it's photographic paper, which we don't get too much anymore, um, the Ilford is a really nice matte. Um, I'm finding the Epson hot press to be really great. Um, you want something that has a tooth to it, but not too much of a tooth, because then if you use the pencils, which we use, you usually use, it drops down. So, um, and I'm actually, I'm going to Kalamazoo, Michigan in May to teach a hand coloring class at the uh, Art Institute. And I am doing um, a, for Santa Fe Photographic Workshops in April, the first weekend in April, that class usually fills up, but it's hand coloring and it's, it's virtual. And it's really great um, because we, we have cameras all around and we, we just hand color for two days together. And it's really, um, it's wonderful. But you need, an, you need something that has a tooth, you know, so that it, 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 because if it's a gloss paper, it will not work. Um, and I, what I would do is try to get some samples, but really I, we've, we've had really, really good luck with the Epson hot press. Um, you just don't want something that's too shiny and too glossy. But then too, you can spray it. We use a, a Krylon matte spray that will give it a tooth. And then as far as pencils goes, um, we, you know, I was using Prismacolor because they sponsored me for so long. So I have a ton of it, but we're starting to use this new thing that looks like it's makeup. We've, we've been getting it off of Amazon and it's called Pan Pastel and it's so cool. And it's got iridescence. It's just a lot of fun. Uh, next the next it. question. Oh, sorry. That's okay. Um, no, I, go ahead. I'll, okay. I, no, I said, I, I'm sorry. I don't live closer because we could do, you know, a hand coloring class and it's really fun. Um, I find it incredibly therapeutic. And um, the, the, the other thing with hand coloring is you want to only the highlight areas and the light mid-tone areas are going to color well. So if you have a lot of darks, it's not going to work. Uh, the next question is, is Snapseed an app that's only for the, for the phone or can it be used on your desktop computer? No. You can use it on your phone. Um, I didn't bring over my laptop. My, um, I have an iPad. Um, and a stylist, so I have a pencil, and I use that with it. So I'll either do it on my phone or on my iPad. I've been doing it on my iPad more lately because I want to get into the fine areas. And and I think the um I think the stylus is you just have to get you have to make sure that you have a new enough model that will take of uh, uh, will take the stylus. But they're really fun, and you can write on them too. But that's why you can get into those little small areas because like there's a great healing brush in Snapseed and you use your finger, but your finger's pretty big. So we may be healing and getting rid of some of the stuff that we don't want to get rid of. Uh, the next question, can the story be right in front of you in one frame? How lucky to sense to see that. Please comment. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, how lucky to sense do you mean how do you know when you've got it is i don't know who asked this francie Fran francie right oh, oh yeah uh, well you see something and you've got to make a split second decision let's say if it's a streetscape mm -hmm. and the light is changing and it's it's only that moment in time right you cannot set up the shot it's either either what you see and what you intuit is worth it's worth it or you move on um how often has that happened to you oh a lot you actually have gotten the story in one take a, a lot it happens i mean it does happen um not always but sometimes it, it also depends on you because i see a lot of people going out 
photographing and they're thinking about what they're making for dinner. You know, how do you, that's a, that's a disconnect or take a prompt or just when you see something, just drop in and feel it. So Francie, the other part of it is, is the post-production. So to me, like what we teach these classes called um, capture to completion. So it's the concept, like when we photograph, you know, everything in your image has to be there for one of two reasons, composition or content. If it's not helping that, why have it in the picture? And then with post-production, you know, what is the feeling like when you get that feeling like the decisive mom moment that uh, uh, Henri Cartier-Bresson did, you know, he just knew it. He just knew he had that right, but he's watching. And he is also aware that something is unique there and you take the picture. Yeah, it doesn't happen all the time. But then too, when you go into post-production, how do you continue the story? And that's what's so great about Snapseed and what we, the technology we have. I mean, we were somewhat limited in the dark room, um, you know, not necessarily with alternative processes, but there's so much you can do. I mean, I can look at a photograph that somebody took and buy, you know, just the raw photograph. And then I see what they did with the storytelling in post. And I'm like, whoa, you know, you really, it was, you put a lot together. You are telling a story. That's a really good question though, Francie. It's sometimes it's luck. Um, sometimes we see it and then it doesn't happen again for a year or two. And sometimes it's waiting just for us. That's right. I like to look at it that way. <laughs> thank you, Lori. Thank you. Francie, thank you. Uh, another question was, what was the slow shutter app you mentioned? It's called slow shutter, I think. Wait a minute. It's a blue, whoops. It's blue, dark blue, and it's called slow shutter. Can you see? It's right down there on the lower right. See the blue one? That's it. You got to play with it a little bit because... Um, it, 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 there's a little bit of a learning curve, but once you get it, like I was playing with it the other day, I, I went to, I swim a lot. That's how I just work out my world. Um, I mentioned that, but um, I went to go swimming and the pool was closed. They didn't have a lifeguard, whatever. And I, and I had to be someplace else in like two hours. And I just went and I, I didn't have a camera with me. I had my phone. And I said, you know what? I haven't really played with slow, the slow shutter in a while. And I just played with it. So it does, you know, it takes a while to get used to it. And I just got fun. And I, you know, I got over myself, you know, that I couldn't go swimming. Um, but uh, you can do all kinds of movements. And, you know, the, the greatest thing about these apps, and especially like Snapseed, there are so many tutorials on YouTube. So watch them. Because when you when you download this, it doesn't have any directions. None at all. You know, my birds that I showed you, no directions. I just, it was Distress X and FX. And I just like started playing and I'm like, wow, I can even bend these birds. I can move them any place I want. I didn't know what I could do. Um, and they're fun. I mean, I'm not a TV watcher. I, I sort of am right now because of the Olympics, but um, that's what I do at all at night a lot unless i've been on you know I, I unless i've been on um devices all day you know i you know i had a three-hour uh workshop today so it's like okay i may be up all night because that's a lot of hours on you know zoom but um it's such a gift god could you imagine if we didn't have this yeah so the answer is um snapsy like uh Snapseed can't be done. None of these apps can be done on the computer. You can get other apps. So the the last question in this in the chat is uh, about any other apps or websites you would recommend. Well, I mean, I would just peruse. I would definitely go to Momentum that I talked about and I would go to um, Lens Babies, uh, other apps. I mean, I, I just find honestly that I get so much from um, Snapseed. There's something called uh, Word Swag, which you can actually write words on it. Um, there's a couple like Layout and Square Ready, 
that so for me i put my images in square ready and then i um put it and then it goes right into instagram and so i've got the um the orientation right and the ratio right so that's kind of cool tintype really fun and hips hipstomatic is that what it is i don't have a lot i'm not you know I like my infrared, but hipstomatic is fantastic. Really, really a lot of fun. And so is tintype. And the hipstomatic, you can take pictures and of yourself or anybody around there and it, it looks like a hipster. <laughs> it's just go out and play. Um, I would just also just look on YouTube's, you know, what are the 10 top apps for um, a smartphone and see what comes up and then and then go go search in the um on YouTube and see what they're about. I mean, they're like I said, Snapseed is a huge learning curve, but probably when you get done, that's the only thing you really need. But I could be wrong. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Um, whoops. Yeah, I think, um, oh, I know. Just one more, the hip, the, yeah, do the do the one that I told you to with the birds, which is the FX. You also can do post postcards, where you can make an image, and then put it on a postcard. It's just called postcard, and they'll mail it to whoever you want. You have to pay for it, obviously, but it's kind of cool. Um, let's see what else. Yeah, I would just um. Yeah, pick collage is fun because you can put multiple images on one page. And I don't, I get overwhelmed. So I try to simplify. So I try to use uh, the same application all the time. And I, and I do obviously do a lot of work right on the computer with um, in Photoshop and with, um, I do use uh, Luminar which is wonderful. We, they sponsor us and so does um, DxO, which is the old Nick filters. They're quite wonderful too. So we, we've done seminars for them. So, but the big thing is just have fun. I, you know, what I think is great is, um, do, do you, any of you guys ever see Sabine and, um, what was it? Sabine and Griffin book? Oh my God, it was this book about postcards going back and forth between these two people and you never really knew if they were really just one person. And so um, I'm, I have friends like, I've had um, some of my mentor kids, um, you know, that are now in their twenties, will just, you know, if they get in a rut, they say, let's, let's do the postcards and I'll send a photograph and then they respond by a photograph. And so it's storytelling in a different way, so. But I would go on um, YouTube and just, or, you know, just what are the best apps out there and see what appeals to you. And did you know there's a full moon, a snow moon today, moments before high noon? And I like this, Francie, since Neptune rules photography, when is your birthday? That's cool. Okay, what else can I share with you? Or anybody want to say anything? Well, yes, uh, Lori, I asked that question and I know how personal birthdays are uh, for obvious reasons and perhaps not so obvious reasons, but I was just curious. They had young, you know, believed uh, so much in the interconnectivity between the planets and personal creativity. And in his research, uh, especially in photography and those whose creative expression is through the eye of the soul, the lens, they had Pisces somewhere prominent in their chart. So I was just wondering if by any chance you have uh, Pisces midheaven or, Pi or, or Pisces rising or Pisces falling. <laughs> Something maybe we all do. I don't know. I'm a Gemini, so I'm a twin. So I really I haven't had a I haven't had a reading in a long time. But that's kind of cool. But you do, you know, you can I boy, you know, being being in Rhode Island is really interesting. It's it's smaller than Connecticut, obviously, but it's like 
the when it get, it gets gets dark here like at a quarter of four. Oh man, I don't handle it well. So it's like it's it's not what you're talking about about Francie, but it's like we are really really tied into the elements. Yeah, but you know what's interesting, Lori. Uh, you are such a Gemini because Gemini is duality. It's two. And you're constantly referencing your alter ego models. Oh, yeah. My surrogates. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. yes. That's amazing. Look well, at that. You. And are you, are you a May or a June Gemini? No, I'm June. Early June. Any day? Seven. Oh, look at that. How phenomenal. And I don't want to drive you crazy, Lori, but of course, seven is the number that has the vibration, of course, to Neptune, because seven is the number associated with high spirituality. And of course, the capturing of a moment, so to speak, is engaging in what is not seen and revealing it. And that's what faith is, of course, seeing what is not seen and acting on it. So the photographer brings the life to the foreground that otherwise might be missed. Right, how wonderful. I mean, see, they're all tied in. Everything. It's not just that it's the whole spirituality is making art. I mean, we can tie it in however we want. I mean, our, we have such a big feel to draw from. And and you're totally right, because um, I am a manifester and it's a little uncanny to a lot of people around me. But we all have these opportunities. But anyway, that's another time for another story. I wish you guys all lived nearby. I heard. Uh -huh. um, yes, I um I had a I put something in the chat because you had asked earlier, um, you know, if we see any patterns in our work. Mm -hmm. And I wrote in the chat, I love to shoot people from the back. Mm. I just love that. Some of my favorite photographs, people are walking away, they're sitting, either way, usually they're walking, and I like, you know body parts. I like to look at feet or, you know, and so it's all very much behind the scenes. Nothing's posed. Right. You know? So I was thinking about that when you, and I like a lot of things in a photograph and a lot of color, but now I'm rethinking about color. Well, we'll just and try white. it. It's experiment. Yeah. You know? um, and do you make prints? Yes, I do. Good, because if you make prints and then when you put them, change their order, um, they want to tell you stories, but if, we're, if, if they're just locked up on our phone or on our camera, we don't get to listen to them or feel them. And sometimes oh, yeah. when you put them next to another image. What if you did a front and a back? Is it a duality? Is it a diptych? What are you yeah. trying to say? And, and to then also do a dump, I do a word dump. What, what words or what feelings do you have when you look at all your images? Mm -hmm. Because your images are speaking to you. It's like, how do we learn how to listen? Yeah, I have a lot of prints, all eight by tens, but it's very interesting to me how that's what it is every time mm -hmm. walking away. And um, I just love them. I just well, which, love them. which is great. But now, you know, when you are aware of it, mm -hmm. then you own it. And then you can take it to the next level. Like, this is what I do. This is what I like. Where is it going? Why is somebody walking away? You know, so you can ask questions. Be curious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I just thought it was interesting. I definitely have a pattern. It's a lot of candids for sure. Yeah, that's wonderful. But that's, I mean, I, when you know your voice, mm -hmm. you can keep going deeper. Yeah. You can keep moving it because it's, it's, it's like, um, if yeah you find that you have so many yellow dresses in your closet let's say mm -hmm. but you don't really know didn't realize it and so you don't wear them all the time but then if you take the yellow and deliberately wear them then it adds something else because you may then have other feelings i don't know but that we, that we leave ourselves bread breadcrumbs and we can follow them well thank you it was a really great presentation thank you so much thank you kim thank you sure. You know, Lori, I have one other thing. I'm so jealous that you're in Rhode Island, especially this year, since it is 
1937 at the Narragansett Park racetrack was the first time ever and the only time ever in the United States that the National Guard was called in to a racetrack to put down an insurrection. So it was a major seminal point in the late 1930s in that transition uh, from out of the horrors of the Depression into the horrors of the Holocaust, where there was that giddy moment where people were betting their lives away in Rhode Island. And so it was a seminal moment. The Supreme Court got involved. And of course, this year is the uh, 85th anniversary of that. And it's in Narragansett in Rhode Island. So maybe um, if you think it worthwhile, you might consider uh, to do any type of reflection on that, because I think what was at issue then resonates right now. Yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Um, I am going to check that out. If you come across anything, can you um, send it to me? Um, I'll, I'll put my, do you guys know how to, you guys save the chat, don't you? Sure. Oh, well, if you put your email, I'll make a note. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out how I can do it without a direct message. Mm. I can send it to everyone when I send out the link right. for the recording. Oh, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, thank you. That was very interesting. I learned a lot tonight. So I uh, thanks, so, Lori. That was so great. Thank you so much. Come on, um, on Visual Visionaries um, with Lori Klein. If you guys are on, um, uh, what should we call it? Um, Facebook, because. I, you know, I have a very eclectic uh, following and students, and they're very, very supportive of each other. And it's just really interesting to see what people are doing. Okay. Okay. I guess I guess that's it for tonight. But thank you so much, Lori. Was so great. Thank it was you. Really great. Honor. Okay. Thank yeah. you. It's nice to see you all. Thanks Stay everybody for coming. Okay. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. Bye. Bye.